Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And this is part three, and the final part, of my series on the Craftsman 15-inch metal cutting bandsaw. Now, you may hear a little thunder out there. It is raining, but at least we don't have to worry about Tommy mowing today, do we? Well, the bandsaw blades came in directly from Sterrett, and I ordered them through KBC Tools, and they are bimetal, intense pro die so they're uh, the better blades and I hope they last a long time because two of them cost 129 including shipping so that's a total of two hundred and sixty dollars worth of bandsaw blades far more than I paid for the saw itself Now, bimetal blades should last, uh, I don't know, ten times longer than a carbon steel blade. That is if they're not abused. But once you lose a tooth, you know, it's a progressive thing and the blade will soon fail. So, with careful use at the right speed and cutting the right thickness of metal, I, hate, I hope to have a lifetime supply right here. And again, there's a close-up. These are 100 and 11 inches long, but I noticed that, uh, you know, on the bandsaw it says 111 inches, but when you order blades from most of the cat catalogs, they always go by feet and inches, so that's 9 foot 3 inches. I bought two half inches and two 3 eighths, and they are variable pitch, 14 to 18, might be a little fine for some work, but I do a lot of thin work and a coarser blade is going to be uh, uh, short-lived on thin metal. Now since we met last I have done several improvements I hope and one is to put a handle here on this belt cover so that I can more easily uh, manipulate it and have something to hang on to and I had that door opener uh, handle in stock. I did have to repaint it so it matched, but I think it looks pretty good, almost like it belongs there. If you watch the other videos, you will remember I told you that the motor is tilted, or was tilted. I have corrected that already by shimming it. Now I'm going to align the two pulleys so that the belt will run true. I showed you that also in the other video that one of the pulleys is farther out on the shafts than the other. Be sure and unplug your machine when you work on belts and pulleys or any moving parts for that matter. All right there's one set screw matter of fact it's three millimeters made in Taiwan you know and so I've got that loosened and I need to move this pulley out toward me probably a full quarter inch and now let's see if I'm yeah that's looking pretty good right there so I'll go ahead and tighten this and it's ready to run now we've got a worm's eye view looking underneath the table and you can see that there are two knobs required to be loosened in order to tilt the table. This one has kind of a ratcheting mechanism on it, so actually it's fairly handy. And now we can tilt it, and there's a pretty good sized protractor there as well. How accurate it is, I don't know, but tilting the table is something that I hardly ever do. But there it is, just in case I need to. Remember, never move a bandsaw or lift a bandsaw or any tool that has a tilting table by the table itself. That is not a handle, that's not a lifting point. You probably will break something. I'm on the back side of the machine now. Most bandsaws have a stop and here it is, just a bolt with a lock nut that is used to set the table at zero. So, I've already set that, but using a little combination square, and it's good to have a, a six-incher for that, and I've got it squared up nicely, and now I'm tight tightening the two table locks. Now let's check the blade speeds. You can see that I'm on the groove, in the groove, for the slowest speed, which is 80 feet per minute, but using my Swiss 
RPM counter, tachometer, and you might remember when I very recently bought this Hassler at an auction three months ago, perhaps, and I put the wheel on it, and notice that it says here feet, in other words, feet per minute, because they sold two versions of this apparently, one in Imperial, one in metric, and there's two scales here, so I'll be using the red scale, which is feet per minute. The black scale is RPM, and I'm not interested in RPM. Kind of a dangerous test because I do not have the guard on for the belts, nor do I have the guide down very low, so there's a lot of area here that a fellow needs to worry about. And there it is, I'm getting some variation in the reading, but I'm pretty much right at 80 or just a little bit under 90 someplace. That's the slowest speed. I've changed the V-belt to the middle position and it should be in the uh, range of about 150 feet per minute. it's almost exactly 150 feet per minute. Matter of fact, it is exactly 150. Now the belt is in the largest groove on the lower pulley, the motor pulley, and this is the fastest that it will run, and it should be around 200 feet per minute. a little faster it's about 215 feet per minute which still would be great for aluminum and softer metals and so you can see that the speeds here again are 80 150 and 200 feet per minute and it really jibes very closely with that doesn't it so they did a good job on that and I have it set for 150 that's a good speed uh, for what I do here not too slow not too fast, and I think the bimetal blades can uh, stand up to that. And the whole thing here about metal cutting bandsaws is the slow speed. That is the, the answer in a nutshell to what I've been needing and uh, struggling with in trying to modify my Delta bandsaws. And you might have watched some of those videos, and pretty much an abject failure. This saw came with a light, but it's pretty pathetic. It's basically a bed's a reading light with a, with a clamp on it. But, and he had it clamped on that eyelet at the top. But this is a magnet, and in some ways, you know, it might be okay to hold it, but it's still pretty floppy, and I really don't need it in the garage here because this area is so well lit because it's my studio. Alrighty, I've already mounted one of these pro die blades on there, half inch wide. I really dislike changing blades from uh, one width to the other, as you probably do, because including the adjustment of the guides, you can spend uh, 15, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes changing blades, and it's just uh, not a fun thing to do. So I like to put one blade on, an all-purpose blade, and pretty much leave it on until it fails. There's a little bit of a rattle to that thing. It's probably some sheet metal, but it's not too bad. It's not too terribly loud, but running at 150 feet per minute, you can get an idea of how fast, or should I say how slow, the wheels should be revolving. Sometimes if a casting is not well seasoned, you know, they make this slit here, and it's liable to change uh, dimensions here where one side is up higher than the other. In other words, the two sides from this slit do not align. And that is the purpose, of course, of this little tapered plug that is uh, equipped with most bandsaws, so don't lose that. But you do have to take it out in order to change blades. All right, let's take a few trial cuts, shall we? This is eighth inch mild steel. Always keep your blade guy down about as close to the work as you can. Use a pusher, it's easy on the thumbs, plus as you break through, you won't run your thumbs into the blade. I can't tell you how many students ran a, 
the saw blade into their thumbs, at least on a metal cutting saw, it won't take your thumb off, just gives you a nasty cut. 150 feet per minute. <laughs> Safety glasses on. Three-eighths hot roll steel, and I think I'll use the miter gauge, something I very seldom do. Wow, wow what a nice job that does. When you cut round stock, I think you know this, but always use a uh, drill press vise lay, either laying on its side or upside down to keep the work from revolving because once it starts spinning uh, it's very likely to break the blade also if you've ever had your hands on a round piece of work you know it'll start rolling and pinch your fingers and it can be quite painful <laughs> And don't stick your fingers in there to remove swore for small pieces. And the guide is a little bit higher here than it should, but I'm doing that for clarity. I happen to know what kind of steel I'm cutting here. This is a three-quarter cold roll steel. But if you're doing a repair job and the source of the material is unknown, whatever you do, don't try to cut hardened material. Always check it with a file, and you can tell by the sound and uh, whether or not the file is cutting and biting in as to, as to whether or not the material is hardened because you just ruin the blade and take the edge off of it real quickly and uh, in this case it would be a $55 mistake and that was quite a nice square cut this will be the first time in my life that I used a fence on a metal cutting bandsaw. So let's see how it works. This is only eighth inch thick material. It'll be easy cutting. And that will be the last time in my life I ever use a fence. There's always been a marked tendency for the work to, to kind of move away and I certainly have found that on wood cutting saws, so you can see I didn't get a straight cut here and forget that thing. Now, what I wanted to tell you, and I think you know this, it's no fun cutting on a bandsaw. It's just a chore. So that's why it's nice to have a, a good blade and a good saw so you can get done with the job real quickly and back to what you really want to do and that's work on your lathe or milling machine or at your bench but generally this isn't any fun it's just it's just something you got to do to get the material to the right size now I'm out in the garage remember that in the basement I have my Boyce Crane antique saw also about the same size it's a 14 where this is a 15 inch wheel and uh, that will still be my main saw down the basement, but this one's going to stay outside, so now I have a saw in each shop, which is quite a luxury. Because, again, and I told you in the earlier video, you just do not see many vertical metal cutting band saws in use anywhere. And by the way, I still have the belt guard off back there. You can see the pulley because of the demonstration here but I'm gonna put that guard on right now because I'm gonna keep it at this speed which is 150 feet per minute if I might digress just a little bit now I was lamenting that this saw is made in the Far East specifically Taiwan and I've often told you how much I love do-all bandsaws. Well, when I was at Fabtech a year and a half or two years ago, I went to the do-all bandsaw display, and I talked to a man quite a while, and they do not offer that many different bandsaws. They cut way down on the different models and uh, 
they are no longer made in America. I doubt very, very much if there are many vertical band saws, but there is one made in Wisconsin yet, I believe. They make a horizontal and uh, vertical. I can't think of their name, but they're pretty high quality, and I'm going to show you one of those at the high school as I go down there to visit uh, that they have in the welding shop. And the boys up at Aluma, uh, Luma Tank also have some of that. Uh, and put that in the, in the uh, comments if you can remember what the name of that brand is. They're pretty good and they're fairly inexpensive. One other thing I wanted to comment, remember I talked a little bit about how flimsy this uh, mechanism was and that the blade can move this way and it still can do that even with tension on the blade. Probably an eighth of an inch or a three sixteenths but it doesn't seem to affect the tracking or the performance are cutting with the machine so I gotta stop looking for trouble and you know this is just good enough and if it ever does cause a problem with it I'll deal it deal with it at that time there really is nothing to lubricate on this machine other than that zerk that I showed you on the transmission these bearings are sealed the motor is sealed and there's just nothing else really that needs to be lubricated. A little bit of grease was already on this slide here, but not too much or it just seems to attract grit and swarf. Keep your machine clean. More and more you see this where there is safety directions and warnings right on the machine itself. Surprisingly enough, in the owner's manual, there are safety rule, rules, but less than uh, one and a half columns and a little bit on the other page here. And, uh, you know, you get more safety rules on a cell phone than what you uh, see right here. Well, that concludes this three-part video series on the Craftsman 15-inch professional vertical bandsaw. Hope you liked it. Hope maybe you can run across one. This is the first one I've ever actually seen in the flesh. I've only seen them in catalog or pictures. So let me know if you have one and how you like it. It seems to be a well-built saw. And I'm really surprised. I was leery on bidding on it. But I paid a very little for it. So I didn't have a whole lot to, to risk. But I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. A lot of enjoyment out of it. And uh, I will see you in the next video. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.